Hello, welcome. My name is Rev Bowen with Simply Waldorf. You are about to see a video that is an example lesson from our third grade watercolor painting course. In this video, you will see how we use colors to establish a background and also set up the painting process. This lesson is an example of the start to finish lessons that we provide in all 36 lessons of the watercolor painting course. So this course, like all the watercolor painting courses, will help you feel the confidence and skillfulness and joy to lead paintings for your student. Or you can watch these lessons along with your student and discover the process together. Either way, this makes it easy and effective to enjoy watercolor painting. I hope you enjoy the whole video and be sure to look in the description below for some resources we've included. I'm going to take some yellow dipping all the way down to the bottom. And I'm just going to create a nice space here in the middle to start with. I'm not worried about my form. I'm just applying color. That's all I'm doing. With the red, I'm only dipping into the water, not down to the bottom. And I'm not blending. I will in a moment, but I'm not blending yet. I'm moving the color around on the outside first. Clean, pinch, wipe down. Same thing with the blue. I'm just dipping my brush into the tip, into the water. Oh, that's pretty thick, so. I'm going to apply the color around and then move it. Now that I've got the color around, I will move the blue and the red together. We won't get too much blending, but a little bit. And again, I don't want red to overwhelm the yellow. So I'm going to pick up some more yellow on my brush, just the water this time. And I'm going to bring more yellow, just the water, into the situation. Because otherwise, red really wants to take over. Red is strong as a color. And yellow is a little bit more timid. There we go. Ah, oh, lovely, lovely. I can bring a little bit more color into the middle. Not much, just spreading it around a little bit. There we go. There we go. One of the great, when we think of food, one of the great things we can grow in our garden, it's not too hard to grow, is the carrot. So when we think of carrots, we often think of the typical orange carrot, 
carrots can come in several different colors. We're certainly going to bring in an orange carrot. I'll do, oh, let's do a couple of orange ones. I'll put down some red here and there. And there's, I'm gonna put some red here too. This is not going to be for an orange carrot. That's going to be for a different color. There are even carrots that are almost white, like part of a turnip. So I'm going to paint that carrot here. Maybe I can do two and here, and I'm just painting with water. You have to do this technique pretty early in your painting before the paint becomes too dry. There we go. And I'll pick up, all I'm doing is drying my brush in between so that it will soak up some of that color. All right, now I'm going to dip, well, let me make sure my brush is clean. Pinch it dry, make it really nice and dry. And I'm going to pick up some thick yellow from the bottom, not the water, so that I can get a nice blend and create those nice orange carrots, because some of them really are orange. Nice bright orange carrots. Oh, that one wasn't supposed to be. We'll see what we do with that. This one will be. And this one will be. I'll let this one go over that one, but behind the other one. Hmm, I put some yellow in there. Let's see what happens because that carrot is going to be a violet color. So I'm going to add, it, that won't, it won't take much blue. So just a tip. And we'll see. Yeah, that's probably enough. Now we'll blend that together. This may turn into more of a brownish carrot rather than a violet. We'll have a little bit of that violet sense in here. Maybe we can add a little red in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Maybe I'll make this one a little darker over here too with some of that red. There we go, we've got some nice shades, different colors here. And I'm going to transition to my smaller brush so that I can make some details, such as with just the blue dipped into the water, I'm going to create some carrot stalks and they'll grow, if you've ever seen them, long, they're very long. 
with smaller leaves on them in bunches. Some can be very long indeed, so we're going to make some of them really long, and not all of them. And we'll spread some out in different directions. There we go. And then, and so I'm doing all this with the same amount of blue. Now I can put those little leaves on the stalks with this same blue that is turning green in the yellow, which is good for us. That's what we need. So I'm just not trying to make individual leaves, just letting these spots of color show little leaf bunches, and they are, they're tiny little leaves on the carrot stalks. Nice, very nice. And then you decide where a few more leaves might be nice. You just look, take a step back. It's always nice to take a step back from your painting. Ooh, I think those stalks are nice. Now, I'm going to come in here in my red, well, this is sort of my red violet carrot. See if I can create the shape a little more definitively. Because it's kind of wanting to spread out. And it does that when the painting is really wet. So now that it's dried a little bit, hopefully I'll be able to keep a little more of a solid shape there. That's better. I'm going to do the same thing now. I don't want my brush to be wet when I do this. I'm just going to try and take some of the color from the carrot and create a more defined edge. That's better. That's a fat carrot, which is okay. Some carrots are fat. And we'll let this carrot be a little bit shorter. Maybe show some of the roots coming off. There we go. We'll do that with a couple of them at least. There. Now, very carefully, I've got a moist brush and I'm just going to see if I can pick up a few, a few little lines off of these carrots. You might have to reshape the bristles so we get a thin line picked up. I'm not pulling, I'm just shaping. There we go. Do a few of those over there here. And here. And here. Mm -hmm. And now my brush is dry, shaped. I'm just going to grab the, the most solid blue I can find. And I am finding it on the edge of my brush where I've wiped off other blue. 
it's already very dry, very solid. It's not going to run. And I want that because I want to create a few little darker lines as well. Notice how small they are. They're not too big and not too many. even on those white carrots. It might help to have a few more on the white carrots than we do on the colored ones. And my last step, got a clean brush. I'm not it's not totally dry, but I've wiped it really well on my painting rag. And I'm just going to grab a little bit of these colors to try and create an edge around the white. It worked a little bit here. I might have to grab just a tiny bit of blue. Tiny. Yeah, see, it doesn't take much. So I'm basically creating a little bit of a shadowed edge. I can put it on the other carrots as well. It won't show up so much on them because they already have color. can just spread that out a little bit here and there. And I have a nice, it gives me a nice sense for where those carrots actually are. There we go. I said that was the last step. I'm going to do one more step just because I like how dark that blue is. So now I'm going to go back again. I'm just picking up a little bit of blue off the edge of the painting jar, not even dipping in at all. And I'm just going to darken in a few little areas the edge of some of those stalks. Just in a few areas. Notice I'm not doing every stalk. I'm not running it all the way up the stalk. It's mostly down near the carrot. There we go. Much better. Lovely. Thanks for watching. I hope you'll subscribe to our channel and I hope you'll visit us at simplywaldorf.com, where you can also subscribe to our newsletter, which comes out twice a month. In that newsletter, we provide articles on Waldorf education, we provide resources, and we provide updates for when new courses come out from Simply Waldorf. All of these will help simplify and support your Waldorf homeschooling endeavors.